uh will be good somebody please pray for god's blessings for god to lead us and then we will start today's discussion who would like to lead us in a word of prayer manu uh you're on the call i think it's been a while right you have been been able to join yes, recently yeah uh, hope you're doing okay yes ma'am okay will you be able to lead us in prayer yes ma'am sure ma'am yeah thank yeah. you for him manu thank you lord yes for this day thank you lord yes i submit for yes this day hallelujah in your hand father god father god i pray to you lord yes as we are going to lord yes learn some more things lord yes to this class father god lead us lord yes holy spirit i welcome you lord and dwell in us and lord just teach us lord yes through madam thank you lord yes i submit all pray in my dear hand lord yes i ask amen 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 thank you lord amen thank you lord thank you jesus yeah thank you manu thank you for uh, leading us in prayer so we'll get started uh, with today's uh, portion um if uh, you all are concerned that you know we are taking a lot of time to kind of go through some of the the sections here in the book of acts um, don't worry about it you know depending on the the content that we cover sometimes the pace is a little slower sometimes it faster and i really don't want to rush i, I want to make sure we we look at as many details as possible okay so that's the that's the reason uh, that in some places we we may mm, feel stuck but uh, you know it's good it's good for us uh, in acts chapter 11 so far what we saw is um, we saw that the believers who got persecuted uh, they were scattered you know throughout the region and uh, they um, did the work of the ministry and we saw a place called antioch Okay, Antioch. Uh, um, there are many Antiochs. Okay, at that time, uh, 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 there were several an Antiochs. Um, you know that that cities that were named Antioch by a by a certain ruler because um, I think it was his father's father's uh, name. that he wanted so there are lots of antiochs about 15 antiochs so whenever we talk about an antioch we need to know which antioch we are referring to but we are basically rec- referring to syrian the antioch of syria where the believers had planted a church and this was a church which was doing well um which the elders in jerusalem heard about okay and uh, the moment they heard about this church they sent uh, their um colleagues so barnabas was somebody who was sent to this church because you know a uh, beautiful thing about this church is it was see again it was planted by believers it was not planted by some apostle or uh, you know some great uh, we may think that they have a certain anointing and they are the ones who have planted the church but of course for the growth of the church we need the anointings we need the teaching uh, you know anointing we need the prophetic anointing we need all of that to continue the church but while the church began you had just like regular people who started the church okay and uh, the beauty of this church in verse 21 it says the hand of the lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the lord you know how wonderful what does a church need the hand of the lord to be upon it and there was great multiplication and growth that came about uh, hand of the lord means the strength of the lord the blessing of the lord was on the church and today what do we seek for our churches that's what we need right we need god's leading we need god um moving upon us and the hand of the lord is something that we we desire every local church we desire that and when god's hand is upon our lives what happens we see the church of antioch that it great number believed and turned to the lord so it's growth church growth we talk about it right so uh, the uh, one of the key things is that we need god's presence we need god's blessing and leading now just uh, backing up a little bit before this we had talked about cornelius okay? cornelius who is from a gentile background 
and god called peter to go minister to him and it was a historic uh, event how do we know it in one sense there is a repetition of what a uh, dream peter had he once sees that and then he explains it to cornelius and then later when he comes to jerusalem in uh, acts chapter 11 uh, the other apostles question him in fact they are angered they say how could you go and how could you uh, eat with the gentiles now eating is a sign of deep fellowship now jews never would do that with gentiles but peter because of the change of heart that he had by the leading of god he ended up fellowshipping with the uh, gentile known as cornelius and he shares this with the uh, other apostles in jerusalem and they are upset with him and then again you know by way of repetition so in scripture we know you know generally when there is a repetition like a dream is repeated it is significant so the explanation is repeated now peter repeats oh you know what i saw a vision in that vision god showed me the kosher clean unclean animals and uh, uh, you know all on the same sheet and uh, he told me to go and uh, you know kill and eat so basically he explains and says god led me and at the end of that we saw how god is working in the lives of the apostles they were silent when they heard this account by peter they were receptive of the message that god is now moving into other communities and he's touching the lives of believers now you know all this teaches us that the church of acts was open to the leading of god they were not stuck in their own biases they were not stuck yes they they revolted when they saw that you know uh, peter was doing something that traditionally nobody would do but when they understood that god is directing them outside their you know their their box their area uh, they were happy they were like okay fine you know god is touching many other communities so these are the things that we have seen now in the church of antioch which is doing very well uh, once see again the elders in the church of jerusalem they were the kind who knew that equipping the believers is very important you know planting churches sometimes we may take pride in that oh we have five churches we have six churches we have 10 churches now the number of churches is wonderful but the equipping of the saints the maturing of the saints in the churches is also of importance now in the um, the church of jerusalem whenever the elders heard about a church you remember when they heard about the ministry of philip they immediately sent peter and john for adding to the 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 uh, revelation which the people in samaria had so about the holy spirit you know the baptism of the holy spirit they did not know but when the ministers went from jerusalem they imparted uh, this revelation as well now the church of antioch is it a good church is it a thriving church is it a dynamic church very much it's doing very well so what is the need for the church of jerusalem to send somebody to equip them further but we see that the elders to this so uh, uh they sent barnabas to go to antioch and when he comes to the church of antioch again you know so beautiful it says uh he had seen the grace of god he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the lord so again you know we are understanding that the church of antioch was a good church because even barnabas was so happy he was glad he saw the grace of god upon them he encouraged them uh, it says okay uh, so that that is what uh, we have um, understood about the church of antioch now a uh, barnabas is there and again it says great many people were added to the church so overall the church is doing very well but you know we go on to see that at one point barnabas goes to search for uh, saul okay he goes to tarsus itself remember he was uh, in the areas of damascus and arabia for a little bit and then he uh, went away to tarsus because people were not ready to accept saul they thought he was um, you know like an impostor he was trying to 
gain the favor of the people but he was actually against the believers that's what that was the idea which the believers had so they didn't believe him but he went back to tarsus and uh, uh, you know this was like several years had passed by maybe about 12 years or so had passed by uh, in tarsus and we don't know much about the ministry of saul there uh, but we know that you know these are the years that god really built him up and uh, he was engaging in ministry um, he was growing in the revelation of uh, uh, god's word over his life so there was a growth but it was not a time of public ministry in the life of saul now why does barnabas go to find saul to bring him to antioch you know uh, we have already seen that antioch is a thriving church now maybe barnabas himself being uh, you know him being a uh, like a kind of a father in the church you know engaging in uh, teaching ministry and things like that he may have felt that he needs an additional hand you know whenever the work of the ministry increases what happens we end up needing more people to serve so uh, maybe that was the the reason he would have thought okay if saul comes he can also help me in in teaching and uh, equipping the saints here so that they will mature in the things of the lord so that is the reason he goes and it says he he to seek saul meaning to really search for saul and when he found him he brought him back to antioch okay uh, and then what happens for an entire year for an entire year what is happening equipping okay training okay uh, a great many people were taught it is said okay and uh, at this point when they were taught so well for an entire year by leaders like barnabas a uh, leader like um, uh, saul uh, at the end of this we are hearing that for the first time the disciples are known as christians in antioch so till now the term christian has not been used but now you know in antioch the people are being called as christians so so far what were the believers uh, called did they have any name did the movement have any name do you recall tell me i think from your memory we have discussed this brethren okay very nice what else okay christ follower uh when we read about saul he was persecuting the fill in the blanks a term was used disciple okay disciple yes disciple we have seen mm, church uh maybe not believer okay they believed it says and any any name you know for the movement okay god's followers all right so you know what there were a few terms which were used to describe the believers disciples saints believers brothers witnesses followers of the remember the term the way the okay, w a y which was used okay w a y way so saul was persecuting those who belonged to the way you remember so this was also a term that was used um and yes now finally in acts 11 for the first time the believers are being known as christians so christians means what similar to disciple okay it's it basically means 
somebody who is a Christ follower. A disciple is a follower, and uh, a Christian is a Christ follower. So that is the meaning. And here is where you see the term Christian for the very first time. And the Church of Antioch is equipping its believers. Now let's continue to see what happens in the Church of Antioch. So now we are at verse twenty-seven. Okay, so in the time um, when the Antioch church was growing, um, there came some prophets also from the church of Jerusalem. We all know that God has given the fivefold ministry offices for the equipping of the saints. So you see how beautifully the church of Jerusalem was was interested. And serving um, local churches, which they heard of. So when they heard the Church of Antioch was doing well, they sent a leader, and that leader took on the responsibility to equip them with teaching. Okay, so Barnabas, Saul, for one year they taught. What could they have taught? They could have taught them uh, earlier. Remember, we said the apostles' doctrine uh, was taught to the people. We Said that uh, you know the teachings of the kingdom of God and about the life of Jesus. Right? These are all the teachings that uh, we we can expect Paul and Barnabas to have imparted to the believers. Now the prophetic is required, right? So these all these things will cause the growth of the church. It will cause the growth and the maturity of the believer. So now prophets are coming from the church of Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them. That person's name is Agabus, and what does Agabus do? He stands up and he prophesies that there is going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Okay, then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So you know this is a feature of the Antioch church. It's a church which was already doing well. A lot of people were being added to it. Then the church was equipped. Now prophets have come to the church. And what else do we see when they hear this word? Okay, they believe in prophecy. So Agabus, apparently Agabus is a notable prophet during those times. We will see Agabus's name once again in the book of Acts. Agabus gives a prophecy about a famine, and you know you you see that the church of Antioch responds. It responds nowadays. If we hear, uh, okay, suppose let's say there is a prophecy that okay, there's going to be a difficult time. And churches are going to struggle, okay? And we come to know about it. What should be our response? What do you think? Somebody comes to us, a notable prophet. We can, you know, trust the word which he's saying, and he's saying there's going to be a famine in this country. Uh, okay. What will be your response? You can unmute and answer. I mean, you don't even have to type in the chat. If you hear that there's going to be a famine, what would you do? Okay, come on, believers. How will you respond? Pray about it and seek okay. confirmation, maybe. And yes, true. And prepare for the situation. Yeah, very good, very good, Dave. So, uh, very practical, also spiritual. They were saying we will pray, and he's also saying we will we will prepare. Okay, what should be done? What should be done? Very good, very nice answer. Good. Uh, anyone else? How do you think we should respond? How would you respond?
so i mean do we plan plan to respond we are all just thinking what would be the best way okay manu says she will arrange things okay very nice so engaging in some sort of a practical way of helping okay so that is how manu would respond so we've seen so far you know some spiritual way of ministering which of course we can pray we can prepare practically manu is saying we will uh, try to give help now if you look at the church of antioch this was before them they know that there is going to be a famine so how are the people responding you see the early church earlier remember there were people living in jerusalem who did not have resources what did the church do they shared the resources okay so the christians we see them really being a powerful witness not just in the spiritual matters you know it's a praying church it's a worshiping church it's a church which is sitting uh, to listen to the word of god but when it comes to issues of practical concern it's also a church that is responding so the church of antioch everyone according to his own ability okay again there is no compulsion the church was not forced you remember even ananias and sapphira there was no compulsion that they had to sell and they had to give all their property to the church there was no compulsion but they lied they tried to make it look like that uh but everyone according to his own ability is what even god expects so the people they collected you know uh, like manu said made some arrangements whatever they had they put it together so that they could send it to help uh, the brethren or others who believed in the region of judea so such a beautiful you know you would love to be part of such a church right where you are being taught the word of god and people are also uh, practically responding to the challenges around them so that is the kind of church the church of antioch was uh, and um, you know it's a blessing to really know about such a church so what did they do they determined it says to send relief wow that means the word is really working in their hearts they are not just you know trying to be spiritual but they are also practical so they determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in judea how did they do this see again lot of wisdom how how did they send the money good way to do is you no know, they they um sent it to the elders by the hands of barnabas and saul so the trusted people in the group were obviously uh, the leaders barnabas and saul so they got that whatever they wanted to give and they sent to the hands of their leaders okay to jerusalem and jerusalem there the leaders could decide you know which region which are the most needy churches okay come on you know let's send this money to them and let it be a blessing to the people so this is what is happening that we we read a little bit about the church of antioch now let's move on and see what else is happening around the same time around the same time you had the rule of herod okay now this herod um is uh, agrippa 1 he is the grandson of, of herod the great so herod the great was the one who ruled at the time when jesus was born it's not the same herod that we are talking about now this one is the grandson okay and this grandson what he does is he begins to harass the church we uh, do understand that the period is one of persecution and there is persecution coming from so many sides we've already seen how saul was treating the church we've already seen how stephen was martyred okay now at the high level at the authority level also you observe that king herod uh, he is going against the believers or now we can also use the term christians to describe the um, believers what did he do you know so far it seemed as if only the the uh, the congregation was bearing the brunt of the persecution as if only the 
people uh, uh, who were being taught are the ones who were the target but in acts chapter 12 we see the martyrdom of a an apostle so we read in verse 2 that he killed herod king uh, herod he killed james the brother of john with the sword okay so which tells us generally the term with the sword means that he would have been beheaded so one of the apostles james the brother of john there are two james don't get confused one james is the brother of jesus okay uh, but this james is the brother of john so the brother of john james was beheaded and uh, we can understand that even the apostles were on the hit list of the authorities and they were waiting uh, to persecute both the apostles as well as other believers who were following jesus christ so very unfortunate and it must have been a a, a time of shaking for the church because uh, the, so much of opposition and direct opposition against them now what happens and when uh, you know herod saw that what he had done actually made the the people the jews very happy okay um he went ahead and it says that he caught peter and he caught him put him in the prison okay now why did uh, herod do this you know different persecutors as we study from the time of uh, uh, peter and john walking into the temple and you know them healing the uh, uh, lame person what were the leaders afraid of at that time they were afraid that the people will turn their trust and put you know put their trust on these apostles and their trust will be moved away from the existing leadership okay so that was the fear later when you look at somebody like saul persecuting you observe that he was zealous for the work of god but he was zealous for the wrong things okay so he had a reason why he was persecuting now looking at king herod why is king herod persecuting the reason is purely political so you notice here that he went ahead and he killed james the brother of john and he got a good response from the jews you know the jews would have been very pleased with the king wow what a brave king look at him you know he's stopping these uh, these uh, so called um, followers of jesus and christians so he wants to get additional praise and acclaim from the jews so he decides okay let's make this better how about you catch another apostle so does herod have a uh, you know a, a sort of a, a a better reason to persecute the believers doesn't look like it just looks like he wanted to please the jews and hold on to his position and his authority so that is why he goes and he seizes it says peter puts him in the prison so peter is now arrested okay but what happens is that time it is a season uh, of unleavened the days of unleavened bread so they are following certain jewish rituals at that time and because of the period um, where this arrest takes place he is not able to execute peter immediately so what he does is he puts peter in the prison and he puts four squads of soldiers to keep him now four squads of soldiers usually they would not put so many soldiers to take care of a prisoner but as if the apostles were so dangerous right they're trying to make they're trying to prove that oh these people you know they're very very dangerous so there are four squads of soldiers to uh, uh, guard peter and they herod again to please the jews okay at the time of passover he decides after the uh, days of unleavened bread at the time of passover after passover he plans to kind of bring peter out and then you know have his trial and have him killed so that is herod's plan uh, and herod is only after pleasing the people now what is the situation on peter's side peter is in the prison 
we are told okay now in such a, a serious situation you know one of your leaders just got killed and one of your leaders is now in prison uh, what would be the response of the church suppose something like this happens today in our church what would we do come on think with me class how will we respond it's scary isn't it yeah so what would you do if one of your leaders is in the prison and you know but, yeah so uh, what have we seen the early church do generally when they get into trouble what do they do they gathered and they prayed more yeah. about it yes exactly exactly so uh, amazing response isn't it we would think that we will try to find the person who is uh, highly influential among us okay let's see if we can contact the authorities bring our leader out you know those are all certain practical things that run through our minds nothing wrong with it uh, but the response of the early church you know they depended on depended on the lord they prayed together that was very very common you know their their practice so we notice once again over here that they are coming together it says but constant prayer okay and that word constant there it is from a greek word uh, called ektinos which is comparable in fact it was the same word which was used for jesus agonizing in the garden of gethsemane in luke 22 verse 44 so you know it tells us constant prayer what kind of prayer did they pray you know it was not a prayer where uh, the the apostles put a time table and said ha huh, time to pray we are in this situation we are announcing 40 days of fasting and prayer you people pray uh, so then people come yeah okay we have to pray it was not like that but constant prayer means from the heart you know the sense of feeling uh, and it's not just a emotional you know uh, i don't know how to explain it but earnestness sincerity from the depth of their heart just the way jesus prayed in gethsemane was he serious in his prayer in gethsemane yeah he he was uh, travailing we studied about that you know the prayer of travailing so he agonized uh, he felt it right in his soul in his spirit he kind of feels it and he reaches out to god in the same way the situation that the church is in they are going before god and we see that they are offering constant prayer okay peter is in the prison we just lost a leader god we don't want to lose another leader okay and they are praying for peter wow what a what an example you know we see that they are called as witnesses jesus said you will be my witnesses right what a witness for us today to uh, uh follow their example they were sincere in their prayer to god and they were praying for peter yeah peter is in the prison but lord you know protect him uh, bring him out you know save him the church has to continue to thrive uh, so these are all the prayers they could have been praying but they were sincere and they offered constant prayer to god then finally you know uh, when uh, herod was about to bring peter out you know the days of unleavened uh, bread are going on so uh, herod decides i need to bring him out on such and such a date so he decides okay tomorrow soldiers bring peter out so what is happening at the same time believers are praying and the night you know before this person has to be brought out peter has to be brought out we read that peter was sleeping now you just imagine okay 
somebody is in the prison suppose you are peter i am peter in the prison is it even possible to sleep tomorrow <laughs> you know i might get executed that might make an individual so anxious you know you're wondering you're thinking oh my goodness what do i have to say sorry to anybody do i have to pay anybody you you like you're thinking all those things because tomorrow can be the execution just now james died but what is peter doing what is peter doing oh yeah correct manu sleeping how can you sleep you know it's it's a, it's incredible i it's my uh, uh, you know uh, interpretation that till now you know peter had developed that confidence remember even earlier they caught him they took him for interrogation there so many things happened uh, the angel came and opened the uh, you know kind of rescued uh peter at that time so peter must have been hopeful that are no problem you know let them do whatever they want god knows how to rescue me why should i spoil my uh, you know night sleep let me enjoy my sleep so he's actually sleeping okay uh, or who knows maybe he was exhausted that also is a possibility that is why he is sleeping and we are told that he was bound with chains between two soldiers so is there a way of escape not at all how how can he escape no way and guards before the door were keeping the prison so high security zone now what happens when people pray here is the result now behold an angel of the lord stood by him so when the church is praying god is sending a supernatural rescue supernatural deliverance an angel stands before him and how does an angel look you know light shone uh, in the prison it's standing before him and he struck peter on the side and raised him up saying arise quickly and the chains fell off his hands so the angel is delivering peter from the chains okay then the angel says to him guard yourself and tie on your sandals or kind of get ready because you need to go out and then you know uh, peter follows that he puts on his garments uh, and he follows now the angel is leading him where is the angel leading him the angel uh, leads him past the first and the second guard post then they came to the iron gate that leads to the uh, to the city which opened to them of its own accord okay you see how god delivers when people are praying chains come off okay and peter is wondering is this real am i sleeping is this a vision it it or is it a real angel that is leading he's still in a state of confusion because he's you know in that sleep mode uh, but the chains broke god is showing him how to get out of the prison and you know he's coming to the iron gate and what do you read the iron gate it says automatically you know it's like a movie right it's it's unbelievable it says which open to them of its own accord how can an iron gate open on its own accord tell me i don't know nobody knows <laughs> but when people are praying these miracles are taking place supernatural deliverance is taking place in the life of a leader the iron gate is opened then what else and they went out and went down one street and immediately the angel departed from him so what did the angel do guidance okay come peter you don't know where to go it's dark you're sleepy you might stumble and fall follow me so go this way that way one more street went down one street so correct road where should peter go that also he doesn't know but the angel leads him right and he comes out and peter finally when the angel left he realizes this is not a vision this is real you know 
you know you kind of pinch yourself you uh, tap yourself and you see oh what is happening so he becomes alert and it says when peter had come to himself or he realized this is not a vision i have really escaped from the prison by the help of an angel so he understood now he says now i know for certain that the lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of herod and from all the expectation of the jewish people isn't that amazing is god able to rescue his people uh, from from the prison i think this is like you know peter's kind of second experience he has been rescued from the prison and he knows that you know we serve a god he can deliver us there is no if he wants to deliver us you know god can deliver us now some people may ask the question you know why is it that uh, james was killed by the sword but we have peter here who has escaped the sword like god what is the logic behind this you know it's hard for us to answer a question like that but uh only god is aware right of the lives of the people now james do you think god was upset with him because he got martyred no we know how god treats the martyrs in the life of stephen we've seen it when stephen was going to be martyred jesus was standing you know up in heaven and it was like a standing ovation for that martyr and the martyr's life now why is it that some people are martyred it's hard to answer that question okay but we know god's response you know god receives the 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 martyr in such an honorable way so uh, was james any lesser than peter uh, before god's eyes no why did peter escape why did james die i don't know the answer to that question but god's honor over the life of james that is understandable he became a martyr and we know how god treats martyrs how jesus treats martyrs you know jesus told saul you know saul saul why are you persecuting me isn't it and now peter peter has escaped maybe we can look at it this way uh, maybe there was something more for peter to complete you know through his lifetime which is why uh, it was not yet time for him to um, uh, go to god so he continued to live on peter continued to live on he had a supernatural escape through the guidance of an angel and this happened because the church was praying for peter so now when we uh, see you know where, what where did the angel bring him the angel actually brought him to a house okay this was the house of mary mary was the mother of a, a young man called as john mark okay and in the house of john mark the believers were gathered together in prayer and because he's at this door peter understands angel brought me here let me knock the door so he knocks the door and a girl comes running out her name is roda she recognizes peter's voice okay and she is so happy that she does not even open the gate for him but she runs and she tells everyone you know uh, that peter is at the gate but the funny part is when she tells the people this they say how can it be peter it must be his angel because in those days they had a concept something like you know guardian angel where um uh, a person's angel is uh, with that person and may look like that person so they believed in all those kind of things so the believers there thought it can't be peter he's in the prison how can he be at the door but don't you think it's a little funny because they are praying for god to deliver peter and god has answered their prayer but the answer is so miraculous that they are not able to accept it you know it's like this uh, i've heard this um story where uh some people they prayed for it to rain and a little girl goes up to them and says okay uh, i brought some umbrellas for all of you and they say why 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 are you bringing an umbrella she says no you just prayed for rain then you should believe that it's going to rain 
but the people say no no we don't want umbrella and she's the only one who's holding an umbrella because she's really expecting god to cause it to rain so this girl roda she sees peter and she's so excited that out of the excitement you know she's not opening the door god has answered the prayer and this little girl is going and telling everybody you know uh uh peter is at the door but the so the the so called mature believers they say can't be peter no oh, we prayed for rain but it's not going to rain it's like that <laughs> but i guess you know sometimes we have that attitude isn't it we we it's hard for us to accept that god will answer the prayer uh so anyway that's what happened now peter continued knocking the door and when they opened the door and saw him it says they were astonished wow it is a miracle four squads of a uh, soldiers the herod had put how did this man escape supernatural so they were astonished but quietly they they knew that if they are going to get excited and scream and all in the night everyone will come to know so they quietly tell him okay okay you come inside okay and then peter tells them you know god did this he sent an angel the chains came off uh, the uh, angel showed me the way and finally i'm here okay and uh, he he tells them go tell these things to james and to the brethren and he departed and went to another place so he tells these believers to go ahead and tell which james now this is the brother of jesus who is the uh, considered as you know one of the first pastors of the church of jerusalem so james is the leader this is the brother of jesus so this is what we have seen so far what we'll do is we'll take a small break we will come back we will maybe have some discussion okay and then we will continue i hope you are um, getting something out of this everyone yes ma'am okay excellent excellent all right let's go for a break class we'll be back at 10 o'clock we'll continue yeah wonderful thank you thank you everybody god bless